Hey guys, so today we're gonna be doing a huge Ulta haul. I got a bunch of stuff that I've never tried before that I wanna try on on camera. So it's gonna be like a try on first impressions and then I'll do a full review of each product and then a little roundup at the end. So let's get right into it. So I just zoomed in a bit here so you can see what's going on. I picked up the new Revolution. This is the IRL Filter Foundation. I got the shade F7. It appears to be very, very light for my skin right now, but I think it'll be great in the winter. So I'm gonna mix in a little bit of the Match Blend. This is by number seven. I love this. So then you can use your foundations all year round. They have lighter options too. So this is supposed to be long wear, full coverage with a breathable soft matte finish, but I definitely wanna see what all the hype is about here. So on the Ulta website, this has four and a half out of five stars. There's 16 shades, I believe, and it was $13. So it's supposed to be like a filter for your skin. And as you can see, I have a lot of darker spots and hyperpigmentation, especially in the summer, it gets worse. So let's try it out. And to try it out, I picked up, this is the Morphe M444 foundation brush. I was really intrigued by like the denser, shorter bristles. So we're gonna see how this blends. I am actually gonna mix the foundation onto my hand here. Just do like a couple of pumps and it does have a really nice pump in a glass bottle, which is nice. It does look like it's going to be way too light. So I'm gonna put in a couple of drops of the foundation drops in the shade Honey. It's funny because on the website, it said that the F7 was good for medium skin tones with like neutral undertone. And according to like the find your match or whatever, it said that it would work for me. So yeah, it's a bit light. We'll see how it dries down. This brush is interesting. I don't know if I like it yet because it is very, very dense. It would just be like a lot to get used to. I think that I'm used to with my other foundation brushes, you kind of like push it and you can feel the brushes rather than like a dense feeling. So I'm just gonna do the one side and then we'll compare it. So the right side is obviously done. So there is a huge difference. This is supposed to be a soft matte finish. We'll see how it dries. It does feel, let's just, let's let it dry and then I'll come up with what I feel. I'm liking the way it's looking. It's looking natural and kind of shiny. It doesn't feel dry at all. And I feel like with this foundation, you would totally get away with using less concealer, which is what I like. And I think that this brush does blend it nice. Like it's very densely packed. So it would be very difficult to get any brush stroke lines, almost kind of like similar to using a beauty blender. You kind of get like the best of both worlds here. So just doing a quick examination up close. I think that I really like it. It feels very natural and soft and lightweight. It does appear to be very dewy, but we'll see how it dries down and how the rest of the makeup goes on over. My concern is with products slipping on top of it and it moving around, but it could just be because it almost looks like I just put like a serum and a moisturizer on. That's kind of the finish it's giving, which is great, but it's only great if it lasts. So like, I'm not seeing any dryness under the eyes or any creepiness or anything like that. So aside from the foundation, obviously not matching, you can see here, it's gonna be perfect for the winter, but it's a little light now, but I'll make it work with like bronzer and stuff. So for concealer, I picked up the CoverGirl. This is the True Blend Undercover Concealer. I feel like when this first came out, everybody was comparing it to like the Tarte Shape Tape, I think. But my favorite from the drugstore is the e.l.f. Hydro Conceal. But I wanted to try something different and I do love the Tarte Shape Tape. So I'm gonna give this one a try. The shade range, there was a lot of shades. It was kind of difficult, I felt like, to find a shade that would work the best for me. And then I was doing a bunch of searching and trying to find my shade in like the Tarte Shape Tape and to see exactly which shade of this would be a dupe. But I wasn't able to find an exact match. Like this is very peachy. So in the winter, this definitely wouldn't work for me. Right now, probably would, but it's a little bit more peachy than I would typically go for. I go for more of like a yellow brightening, but this could work for now. And I don't think I told you, but the shade is Classic Beige L900. I'm gonna take a flat angle brush and just blend this out. And I also like to use my concealer to set my eyes. 
and I probably used way too much because again, with this foundation, it doesn't seem like you would need a whole lot of concealer because it does a really good job of covering up any darkness. So quickly, I'm gonna set my under eyes with the Banana Brightening Powder by NYX and then use the Neutrogena Mineral Shears and just powder out the rest of my face very lightly. So the concealer is nice. I mean, definitely don't like it more than the e.l.f. I feel like it is definitely more drying. I mean, I'm not seeing a ton of creasing or creeping, anything more than usual, but I guess I'll just have to see as the day goes on. So I'm gonna quickly pop on some bronzer. I'm just gonna use the L'Oreal True Match Lumi, it's something that I really like. It's perfect for the summer when my skin's a little bit more bronzed. And then I'm gonna share with you a new blush that I got. I was looking for a really nice, like deep berry almost, but like pinky. And I really wanted something cream and I love the Milani Formula Cream Blush. All right, I think that looks better. It's not gonna be perfect just because the shade really did not match me at all. So let's try out this blush. This is the Milani Cheek Kiss Blush. I love this blush. I normally use a shade Nude Kiss. So this is very bright. I wanted something very berry-ish, but I think this is, I mean, it's, it's bright. So, and I always apply it with the e.l.f. little stipple brush. It works the best. So I'm literally just dabbing a tiny bit. This could go wrong very quick, so. Actually not bad. It doesn't look as bright. So that was literally just like one little dab. So I'm just gonna continue to blend and see how this looks. You only need a tiny bit with this shade. Like I wanted a blush that you put it on and it's like, oh, there's my blush. And I think that this is definitely that shade. I don't wanna run into the issue of it clashing with all my other makeup, like my eyeshadow. So hopefully it can all work together. And then when I come back to the blush, I'm gonna put on a little bit of highlighter. I'm gonna use a cream. So for brows, I've been wanting to try this product for a while. It is the Brow Micro Filling Pen by Benefit. It's supposed to give a 24 hour microblading type of effect. I hope I got the right shade. I went with medium brown. I didn't wanna go with the darkest because I don't want my eyebrows to look black. I like them to look dark brown, but I like them to be like very neutral. I don't like them to look too chocolatey, like too warm or too black. So I'm hoping that this shade can work. So here's how it looks up close. There's three little like ticks or pencil marks, whatever you want to call them. And I'm actually on the fence right now about my, getting my eyebrows microbladed. And I guess it's like a com, it's called a combo. I don't even know what that means. I don't know if that means like a combination of like shading and microblading, but apparently it's supposed to last for three years. And I know a couple people that have had it done. And I just, I'm to the point where I just wanna wake up in the morning and just, oh, there's my brows. Like, cause when I leave the house, when my brows are all wacky, like how they are now, like sparse, I just don't feel put together. I just wanna wake up and just have my brows be done and perfect and ready to tackle the day. So to just kind of outline them, I'm gonna use the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the shade Medium Brown. And I'm just gonna pretty much just draw like the two lines you'll see here, just to get the shape I want. And then I'm gonna go in with the brow flick and like in this area, you know, flick it here. So I'll at least have like my starting point. So that's basically my starting point. So in between those lines is where I'm gonna test this out. I am nervous. I've never used this before. This looks a little intimidating. So I'm gonna try to do it holding the mirror with one hand and hopefully you can see, but. Oh wow, so it's definitely not like you're going in with a heavy hand and you're gonna see like these three lines. It's actually a lot easier to work with than I thought. I just don't know that this shade, maybe it's too light. Maybe not though. It's definitely like less aggressive than the pencil. I'm gonna quickly do the other side now. All right, so they're both on. What I'll say is I think this shade is maybe a little bit too light for me. 
So if I were to use a darker shade, maybe I would like it a little bit more. I do really like it, but I just don't think that it would eliminate my need personally for a pencil. I've been holding back on getting this palette because I don't, I don't need any more, but the colors just really spoke to me. And I have another Tarte palette that I love. The Tarte Juicy palette is like one of my favorites. And I was really hoping that this palette was gonna smell like that palette, but it doesn't. There are so many different looks that you can create with this. But since it's fall, I am going to stick with more of a fall color story, but I really, really, really want to try this beautiful yellow and I kind of want to do a green, but then I want to do the burnt orange and the golds. There's just so much to pick from. So I'm going to go in first here with this shade Desire and I'm just going to blend that all over like into the transition. So it gives a lot of color. I don't know why I was so drawn to this yellow shade. I hope that I don't end up hating it. So I'm gonna take that green shade Fantasy with this brush and we're gonna go in with no setting spray or anything and just see how that coats. Sometimes just works better with your finger, but we're gonna see here. And yeah, it's not really, I feel like I could get way better payoff with my finger, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna put that on my pinky finger here. There we go. Just gonna focus it on my lid here. So I'm gonna take a more precise crease brush here and start on the outside and I'm gonna blend this in really, really good. Yeah, I mean, the green is pretty, but it's just, like I wish it would stay the green that it was when you first put it on. So I'm gonna work on the lower lash line now and use the shade Alluring and get it like really tight in there. And then with a bit of a thicker brush, I'm gonna go in with this shade Mischievous, which I think matches my shirt perfectly. And I'm gonna blend that into the lower lash line. Make sure everything looks very blended. All right, so I'm back with some MAC Fix Plus. The green is just not, it's just not doing it for me. So I'm gonna try this out and see if this helps some. So I'm gonna give this a go and see if it makes a difference. Take a look at that difference. So to use that Fantasy, you need to use some MAC Fix Plus or something. All right, I'm gonna let that like set into place before I blend anything out here because I just want it to dry and look the way it's gonna look without messing around anymore and ruining it. So I'm gonna do the same thing and just spray a little MAC Fix Plus here. And I'm gonna go in with that really pretty metallic gold shade, Heartbreaker. But I will say, I don't see a ton of fallout with this palette, which is good. All right, I'm gonna go back in and gently blend these edges out. I might mix a little bit of Passion and Mischievous on the top row here, that one and that one and just blend it into the crease. All right, I definitely like this better. I feel like it gives more depth. So we're gonna do that on the other side. This is what happens when you wanna use every color in the palette and you can't make a decision on which to go with. But I think I'll definitely make a video of like five looks or something using this palette because there are so many good looks that you could do. But I was going for more of the fall explosion today. I'm gonna pop on a little bit of highlighter. This is the ColourPop Wisp. I've used this since it came out and I love it, especially when I'm using cream products like a cream blush because it just melts right into the skin and it looks very natural. Taking the blush brush with no extra product and I like to just stamp it on. So I'm trying out a new mascara today to stick with the Man Eater theme. I wanted to try out the Tarte Man Eater mascara. I really like their Lights Camera Lashes I've used and I love the, um, I forget what it's called. It's like the Sugar Rush Lash, Con I don't know, it's like a lash conditioner or something. It's white. I'll put it on the screen because I can't remember. I tried the sample of it and I still haven't gotten the full size. I need to get the full size because it's literally like one of the best mascaras I've ever used for my type of lashes. So this kind of has a similar effect to those bristles. They're more like skinnier, narrow, really good at combing.
but we'll see if it gives the amount of volume I like because I typically like to layer my mascaras and the first mascara that goes on gives me volume and then I like to go in with like a lengthening mascara, something like this, something that really separates the lashes and I just got a huge smudge there. So I'll wait for that to dry and then just kind of scrape it away with my nail would definitely be really good like after you put a volumizing mascara to further lengthen and separate your lashes so i'm gonna see how it layers on its own so that's just the one coat all right coat number two i'm not noticing like any flaking or you know how sometimes you go to put on a second coat and the bottom coat is like dry and crusty and flaking it's not doing that and I like how you can rotate the wand and there's different like bristle sizes. So it can really get in there and individually coat and comb each lash. That looks really nice. I'm gonna try it out on the bottom lashes. This makes me nervous. My favorite to use on my bottom lashes is the L'Oreal Unlimited because you can bend the wand like every which way and it kind of just gets in there. This mascara is a lot like that one as well. I find like they perform very similar, but I just prefer the wand on that. All right, that's done. I picked up a few different lip products because the Kylie ones were on sale. So I haven't tried this new formula. I loved the old one. I really love the shades. So I got the shades um, Coco K, which is more of like a pinky nude. And then I got the shade Candy K which is more of like a neutral nude color. So this is the Coco K color. And then this is the Candy K. Like they almost look identical. I guess you can tell that the Candy K is a little bit darker. I like the velvet formulas. I don't see that on the site anymore that it was an option. So I'm hoping the new mattes are kind of like that velvet. I feel like I read that, that they were more of like the velvet finish, like a more comfortable finish. And then I also got the new high gloss in Coco K just because I really like like the pinky color. I just feel like I would get more use out of it. And I like that they have a bigger wand now. The old one was just like a little kind of short paintbrush type of a wand. I've been really wanting to try these. This is the Maracuja, I think you pronounce it, Juicy Lip Plump by Tarte. And I got the shade Primrose. So this is it right here. It's so pretty. It has like a clicker. It just looked so good on the lips. It just made the lips look like really full and hydrated and juicy. I'm gonna try this today because I just feel like the color would go a little bit better and I want something more like juicy and plumpy and I've been really excited to try it. So let's do it. For liner, I'm just gonna use one that I have. This is one of my favorites. This is the Wet n Wild Perfect Pout Gel Lip Liner in the shade bear to comment. It's always a repurchase for me because I love the formula. I love the color. It's more of like an everyday creamy lip pencil. So I pretty much just outlined the lips and then filled in like the outer edges and then kept like the center empty so that I can put the color in and you can really get a good look at how the color looks. I'm excited. I'm only going to click it twice because I heard that it comes out pretty thick so it's almost like a like a chapstick but like a very glossy chapstick oh it feels really good it smells good too I'm now feeling a tingling, like a cooling, not like a burning. The only thing I'm not thrilled about is the price. And I've heard that they go very fast. And a lot of the reviews I read said that the clicker stops working. So we'll see. I don't know if it was this exact one, but again, this is a shade Primrose. It's like a perfect everyday color. You can just toss it in your bag. Obviously, I don't think like if you're eating or you have this on all day, it's not gonna stay shiny like this. So just a quick recap and some final thoughts here on the products. So the foundation, really like it. When you put it on, it looks beautiful. Like too good to be true. It looks like you just put a really nice glowy serum on with a filter. It's pretty full coverage. I do have a lot of hyperpigmentation. Obviously this shade match was not it for me. I do have some concerns that it's already starting to break down, particularly 
like on my nose, under the eye area, and a little bit of patchiness. Nothing that like you could see, I don't think through the camera, but just something that I'm seeing. So I, I don't know yet. Like it could be the way the concealer has blended in. It could be the powder products. I'm not really sure. So what I'll do here is when I edit this video, I'll either like insert a clip of the end of the day or I will just put like, you know, some text on the screen or just come back on and let you know my final thoughts after the whole day to see if it was fluke or to see if that was a valid concern. The concealer, I think it's good. It doesn't replace my favorite e.l.f. Um, concealer, the Hydro Camo Concealer. I don't know that it's as good as the Tarte Shape Tape. It's a little bit drying. I think it's a really good option. I also don't think that this is the best shade match for me. The Micro Brow, I think it's great. I think the concept is great. I think the shade match is a little bit light. I had a hard time really seeing like the strokes of the product. So I think that I'm gonna get it in a darker shade and see if that helps. I still prefer to use my pencil, so but I think that maybe if I try it in dark color, it'll look really good. So we'll see there. This palette, love it. There are so many looks and colors and different things that you could do with this. I cannot wait to try it more. I think it's really great. I wish it smelled like the other one, um, but there are so many fun colors in here and I can't wait to try more. So I definitely would recommend it. I think this is, is it, it's like $52 or $54, $58. I'll put it on the screen. It's definitely more of a pricey palette, but for the quality and all the shades and it can take you all year round, I think it's a really good, like if, if I didn't have any eyeshadow and I was recommending someone like what palette to get, I'd be like, yep, pick this one up. It has everything that you would need. I knew I skipped over something, the blush. I actually really like this shade. I think that it is wearable. It's very intimidating. You need a tiny, tiny bit, especially if you are similar skin tone to me, but the formula is just great. I do feel like maybe there was a little bit of a reaction with like the powder and the foundation, but I've used this in other shades and I don't have that problem. So that's why I'm thinking it has something to do with the concealer or the foundation. And when I applied it, I definitely see some patchiness. So the Tarte Man Eater Mascara, I definitely really like it. I would like to see how it layers on top of some of my other volumizing mascara. I am not one to spend a high-end price tag on mascaras. I just feel like L'Oreal does a really great job of, at mascaras and there's many other drugstore mascaras. So, and because you go through it like every couple of months, I just don't tend to spend the extra money on it. So that's why I got the mini size so I could just trial it out and not spend the full price mascara. And then lastly, the Maracuja. I love it. I think it's great. I want it in every color. So that's the haul and the roundup of all the products and what I think. I hope you guys like this video. If you like it, definitely let me know down below and I'll do more of them. I would rather film things that you guys actually want to see than be filming things that you don't. So the only way I know is if you let me know down below. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys.